secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 108. This is your guide to all that's good to nerd. I'm your host, Todd Oxtra. Joined by Lisa Goodman. Hello. And Charlie Carden. Bad bye. Wasn't that the opposite in Seinfeld, in the opposite world? Said a goodbye, you said bad bye? No. Nope. Bad hello. Bad hello. That'd be more. It's the Legion, Le- Legion of Doom. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how are we going, doing, guys? Well, apparently, I'm a little, uh, sorry, I was Charlie's say, just going to talk. Oh, why well, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to talk for you. I said apparently Lisa's under the weather. Lisa, tell us more about it. About the weather or me being under it? Get, get under it, over it. I'm under it. Um, I don't know. Either I have a cold or I have spring allergies. But considering that I was at Legoland and um, Dave and Buster's, I'm sure I picked up every possible disgusting germ in the last 48 hours. So. Uh, don't lick your but fingers. Yes, I will. I will try and ref- yeah. I'll try and refrain from sniffling and sneezing. Lick, lick your fingers and touch the touch the the camera. Blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those places are uh, are, are just like uh, Mos Eisley. You know, just a, 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 a high wretched. Of- yeah, hive. Yes. Boy, yeah, any yeah. any place with that many children it's like a is human absolutely petri dish. a hive of scum and villainy. Well, it's not only like that; the adults have beer. Petri they dish. spill it everywhere. Everything gets <laughs> sticky and gross, and yeah, disgusting. Oh, boy. oh well, you're right. You're right. And that's just in the bar area. Sticky and gross. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, well, for the podcast, per usual. We'll get into the news and rumors with Madam Web. We'll then go into the Geek Easy to uh, listen to some Yacht Rock and nerd out. And then we'll wrap it up with a topic of the week. When nerd love goes bad. So, Madam Web, without further delay, take it away. Now it's time for Madam Web's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Web. It's springtime, so uh, time to break out the jerts and the jorts. Everything gene-related, get your gene ensembles ready to go. It's time to uh, show off those gams and show the gents uh, what they're missing out on. High-waisted jorts, that's all I can say. With the I'm going to go with overalls. Ooh. Oh, that's good. That's a good look. Very 90s. Like like a, just overalls. No, just, just oh, overalls. Just overalls. Oh, wow. That so is, they're uh, strategically uh, covering up bits and pieces? Exactly. Str- strategery. That's why they're called overalls. Ooh, not underalls. Ooh. That's those are right. What are those? What are underalls? Aren't those? Um, there uh, aren't they tires? I thought it was like nylons underalls? or something like that. You're thinking oh. of armor all. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Close. Not enough. under armor. Right. Yes, we 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 we. This is not the fashion show. Sorry. Oh my goodness. All right. So what's it? What's what's in the news? What do we got? What do we so got? So the first rumor, because uh, it's not really a news story, because this is all just uh, conjecture and uh, flim flam. I think in the in the news is how will Princess Leia, or will she even be shown in Episode Nine? So uh, the scenario is that she did film all of her parts for Episode Eight. But is there going to be anything that they could use for episode nine? Hmm. Yes, it's it goes on to say that uh, her daughter and and heir, and, her daughter and her brother Todd, who are apparently the executors of the estate, have granted studio rights uh, for recent footage for the <laughs> finale. So does that mean uh, you know cuts? Here's the cutting room bits and pieces. So is it going to be all these jump cuts of her like, okay, let's launch the attack. Er, 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 er. I mean, is it, what's it going to be like? It, and it also says CGI will not be used to create her. So is it a lot of look at the back of my head at the buns? Or I, <laughs> well, I mean, what do you think? Look at my buns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your um, anaconda um, don't want none unless she's nope. got buns. That's right. Princess Leia buns, hon? No, I read that she, there'd be no CGI as well. So... You know, I'm not entirely sure how they're going to pull it off. It's one of those happy, sad things, right? It's bittersweet. Right. It's remember like that we all want to see her, but that great '90s cuts. 
Bittersweet, sweet and bitter? No, Charlie. No one knows that. No. no. no nobody knows I, what you're talking about, Charlie, ever. Oh, God. I know. I know. I, 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 I think know. they're just going to use like one of the black line figures from Star Wars and just have that <laughs> you know, moved around the screen. What do you think? Yeah, Does that there work? There you go. Action figure um, incorporated. Leia is boarding right. the ship. Do, 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 do. do. <laughs> <laughs> Le- Leia is shooting back. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> don't pretend that we don't all do that with our action figures. She's, so, oh, she's, right? so, she's got such a great articulation. Oh, yeah, but yeah, exactly. Look, her, her, her wrists move, too. She has interchangeable accessories. But anyway. she can't stand up unless you use a stand. What happened, Leia? Yeah. Are you drunk? Oh. Why, is, why is Leia in a doll stand doing this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, God, God rest your soul, Carrie Fisher. I hopefully you are not shooting daggers into us from above. No, she would love it. Come on. All right, all right. She's, she's requesting. She so, she's only played by Gary Fisher. That's what it is. <laughs> it will be. That'll be the CGI. They'll just CGI in the dog's face. They're like, you know, exactly. That'd they could be, awesome. be like, they could be lying to us. It'll all be Gary Fisher. So anyway, good news. Um, hopefully, this means the character will go out. With some dignity, and they'll do it respectfully. One, one can hope. It'll probably probably be more like right. Poochie. Princess Leia returned to her planet and was never seen again. Like just like Poochie. Exactly. I, I went off to find Alderaan, or what's left of it. Like uh, Krypton. Hmm. Right. Exactly. Like All right. So, uh, so this uh, this next story is not likely to give anybody a smile. <laughs> Yeah, so with uh, the trailer of it coming out, um, unfortunately, um, you know, we're getting so, you know, there's some some concerned citizens about how a certain demographic was, um, is being treated lately, and that would be real-life clowns. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, um, apparently... Uh, they, instead of smiling, they are frowning. And nobody likes a sad clown. Everybody Nobody loves the clown, so why don't you? Dude, dude, that was a holy oldie. Come on, sing it with me. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'll stop. We can't sing it with you because we don't want the, the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I, Charlie, I you're you're reaching out to that 1960s demographic. Sorry, buddy. We're, we're looking for those older listeners. Yes. So even one, uh, even one person has already spoken out. Um, his name is Roger Foyas, a 48-year-old clown. Claimed there was a considerable drop in traffic on his Yelp page after the trailer came out. Oh man! Ouch! Oh my goodness! <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's been a steady stream of you know anti-clown propaganda. I guess he would claim uh, since movies like It. Poltergeist, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, American Horror Story, Freak Show. I mean, yeah, clowns aren't getting any love. It's rough. It's real, real rough. Yeah, I mean, quite honestly, does anybody have any fond memories of clowns? Uh, Bozo? Bozo was all right, if you watched WGN back in the day. No? I never thought Bozo was all right. I thought Bozo was pretty damn scary. I don't like clowns. I guess I'm just, which is funny because I like it, but I don't find a, it scary. I don't like about, real life clowns. What about because the, my thing is Charlie? Like, what, what is going on in your life? What is going on in your life that that's your career decision? Like you want to become a clown. Mime school didn't work out. I don't know. I just they just creep me out a little. I'm not being nice. I'm stereotyping clowns, and I should definitely go to clown sensitivity training. I think you could probably found it. Because apparently it's going to... Yeah. I mean, some kind of clown counseling is going to be necessary with this. With, with this clown outbreak. lives matter. Yeah. Oh, lives yes. Ooh, there you go. <clears throat> Moon animals matter. I mean, this is tough, but you're right. Who goes into clowning? Oh, I love to entertain children. There was... Uh, Todd, did you catch... Can you hold on a second? My wife is printing something else. So I'm getting... You're probably going to hear a lot oh. of... The printer is, like, right behind me. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you're just a mess today. We're it's, all a mess it's today. You are, today. Yes. Yeah, you you are the weakest link. I'm sorry. We love apparently, you though. Apparently, yeah. We have to get our taxes done. Well, before, the weakest so. link. Yes. Yeah. Us, us I already too. did mine. Uh, it's painful. Oh well. It, um, it is. It's, it's hurtful for us too, because m- m- money goes to the wrong places, the wrong people. Try running a business. 
Oh, my taxes yikes. are a nightmare. Well, we have to do it now. My wife has now LC because of her publishing okay. stuff. So, in a way, so you we do own it. it. Yes, we do. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I won't talk about that. But yeah, so I decided to bring a CPA in when that was uh, brought into the scene. Too much yeah, crap right. to deal with. I don't want to go to jail. Uh, I, can I can claim everything. Ta <clears throat> Ta yeah, Todd. I don't know that you would hold up in jail. I don't know if I would either. Oh, well, here we go again. I think I don't know. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, I don't even All know right. where I left off. Um, What's well, a good edit point? Well, just you start talking, Todd. We'll we'll use the natural. Uh, I don't know. Just jump in. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. So. Uh, in, in spite of all the anti-clone propaganda we were seeing, you know, I think we need um, we need some pro-clown news. I don't know. Do you guys think well, what could be a good clown-positive character storyline TV show that I think would uh, you know change people's mind about clowns? Oh, I've got it. Uh, maybe a positive. Maybe a some kind of a clown superhero on one of the CW shows. No. Mm -hmm. Clown hero on Riverdale? I don't know. Something like that. Clown joins John, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. John Wayne Gacy documentary. Isn't that his name? The clown serial killer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so helping, is my point. Not helping at all. I mean, we've, in comic books, we've got, like, what, screaming? Clearly, I don't under... This is my point. I need to go to clown sensitivity training. Yeah, we've got right. like, screaming Obviously mini, have slapstick. We've got uh, Harley Quinn, the Joker. I mean, they're all kind of still on the negative side. I mean, right. yeah, we, we need, so I think there is a opportunity, just like when people see like, you know, oh, a new demographic comes up or a new property comes up and it really starts a, a trend, like you have the vampires, the zombies, uh, maybe right. clowns are next, you know, right? Ooh, there you go, a twilight for clowns. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> big Top? Is that what we're going to call no. Big Top? I don't know. No? Do they sparkle? They Do could. They sparkle? Clowns? I don't see. I don't see why not. Well, they, you wipe, wipe so the they're un, undead clowns because clowns aren't scary enough to begin with. No, I no. see. What about like well, they had re the Red Shoes diary, so they could have the Clown Shoe diaries. They could make it go a little more adult. The Big Shoes diary, the Oversized <laughs> Shoes diary. <laughs> That's right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so maybe you can't go positive in that way. Maybe you go a little more sexy with clowns. I don't know. <laughs> well, There's a beer yeah. brewery called. called Clown Shoes. That's right, and they're fantastic. Their their beers have great uh, titles. Very. Uh, very punny. Like, yes. I'm a clown and going to destroy you? Uh, no, more like, you know, they, they, they do things with, like, uh, uh, they made a Minnesota beer specific called the Uni the Luna Dragon, so making fun of the loon with a unicorn and a dragon. So, there you go. They try to play around that, with things. That is terrific. Yes. So, um, you know, guys, there's a big opportunity. Uh, once again, SFU will probably uh, not get credit for us uh, pointing this out. This is an opportunity. So go ahead, write your fanfic, your fanfic put out your uh, story development deals to the networks, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing the great clown onslaught of uh, 2019. Just remember, you heard it here. Give great us some love. Onslaught. Yes, we're even... doing our part. Well, Charlie and Todd are doing their part to better the lives of clowns everywhere. I'm just sitting over here being a bitch to clowns. <laughs> being a clown bitch. <laughs> Clowny bitch. Clown bitch. I'm a clown. <laughs> See? Graham Cyborg is now the clown bitch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, Lisa, you'll come around. Just like I will to, to Baby Groot eventually. Oh, yeah. in, in, uh, in, a, in a distant future. That's right. When nobody likes Baby Groot anymore, I'll come around and be contrarian and say, Baby Groot was the best thing ever of 2017. Baby Groot changed my... Baby Groot and, saved my marriage. Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, um, dear God. And then we... Uh, last story. Uh, this actually came out a few weeks ago, but I had been wanting to talk about it, but kind of got bumped because it's been kind of a slow news week, was that uh, mm -hmm. one of my favorite shows currently, regardless of format, is Bob's Burgers. Love the show. It's fantastic. Great I know, show. I know some people hate it. Oh, yes. they, the, the voices are a little bit annoying. Uh, you know, I totally get it. But that show grew on me, and I just love it. It's such a, I would say it's a positive view of a family. They're all a bit quirky. They all make mistakes. But at the end of the day, there's heart in the show. It's not a negative, mean show, which I love, you know, because there's a lot of <laughs> negative, mean shows out there. But I love it. And they're, they're quirky, weird. They have so many dear, weird references. Well, they and, and music is a huge part of Bob's Burgers. The son, um, he loves to make music. He's got a keyboard, and <laughs> Gene. Uh, Gene is is he's just obsessed with music. I mean, he has a 
plays farts on his keyboard. Loves it. He created a girl gr- girl super group. Um, Tina uh, has uh, fantasies. Uh, was it? Uh, it was erotic friend fiction. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. That's the one. Yeah, butts, but butts, butts, butts. And she loves butts. So she makes up songs uh, and makes and, and Linda, the mom, who's annoying, but we love her. She loves to sing, makes up her own songs. Bob has a weird relationship with his food. He'll talk to it and make up songs. So they do some great musical turns, but uh, they announce that they're going to be, just like The Simpsons has done over time, where they release the, the musical bits on albums, uh, they're going to do the same thing with Bob's Burgers. So they have the Bob's Burgers album was nuts. And the coolest part, and Lisa, I think you'll get a kick out of this, is that there's like a deluxe version of this set. So um, they'll have CDs, they'll have um, MP3s, they'll also have the LPs. But the coolest part is this deluxe set. It's like 70 bucks. And I'm not a vinyl guy, but you're a vinyl gal. I am. I'm not a guy, but I am a gal. Vi- vinyl gal. And uh, you, you, you're, you're at least half right. And, and this is awesome. I mean, right. this collection is fantastic. I mean, you've got, you know, obviously vinyl is all about the artistry, the, you know, album covers and things like that. The art is big, where CDs, they kind of lost that, you know, I guess, excitement, even though if you think about an album, the album cover and the CD insert are just, it's a smaller version of itself. So I don't know. It's different. Um, with vinyl, typically, if you got um, any, any, um, lyrics or anything they're typically an insert right right yeah so yes so, yes it's it's an insert that's called the internet yes shazam okay <laughs> sure why not so um and then they're gonna have these lps are gonna be colored like red yellow and green and it's almost translucent which is kind of funky Ooh, i love Ooh. colored vinyl yeah, yeah. uh even the, out the vinyl album is uh, it's a gatefold so i think it's a three just a fold out um there's there's uh stickers there's patches uh, there's a lyric book, like an actual bound book that's coming out, and I'm almost tempted to get the deluxe set because all of the cool swag. Oh my goodness, what is that, Brian? Uh, Ryan Adams. I'm showing off my my yellow vinyl. Yes, Lisa oh. loves that. The only cool vinyl I ever owned was a Pac-Man album that actually was a had Pac-Man on the album itself. Ooh, neat! In the center part, the yeah, spinner well, part. Yeah, no, no, the full, the full thing was printed. It was oh. a printed, uh, vinyl disc. Yeah, so. Oh, not right, sure why. fancy. Well, I don't know why they did that. I mean, I, we're adults into it, but I love this box set. Love the music. It's going to be two CDs worth of music, and it says three. Uh, now, I, I'm not hip to the whole uh, what does an LP versus, uh, you know, uh, long playing is right, because you know, there's only so many ch- so much uh, right. play time on, a, on an album, so it's going to have basically... Uh, There'll be standard deluxe LP versions, a white seven-inch right. single featuring the five-inch Bob Buster's tracks, um, and there'll be a bonus art print uh, with uh, both LP versions. So this is pretty cool. Oh no, the deluxe box set has been sold out. <laughs> I oh. see that. No, no, it says no. It says the uh, art prints are sold out. Oh, art print, but okay. yeah, yeah. But this is uh, this is exciting. If I can chime in. Uh, this is lifting a lot of those little song vignettes uh, from the show, obviously. But musical guests, including Cindy Lauper and Carly Simon, I mean, that's that's a deep dig. That's pretty. Yeah, deep. really. Girls just uh, want to have fun. To mental rights. Fun, yeah, exactly. F- five never aired Bob's Buskers cover versions of songs performed by St. Vincent the National, Lapsley, and Stephen Merritt of Magnetic Fields. Don't know any of those musicians, but I'm sure they're they're very cutting edge. <laughs> Um, if you look at the track titles, I'll just read a few. They're pretty awesome. One is, track three is Butts, Butts, Butts. Um, right. <laughs> Pirates of Panache. <laughs> Sex Music. Taffy Butt. Um, let's see. Gro- Sex Music. For- <laughs> Taffy Butt. Yep. Gra- you, gro- you, you got Beef Squatched. <laughs> yep. uh, fun, Gro- fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Groping the, for Glory. <laughs> the uh, the oh, Diarrhea Song. Diarrhea Song. Harry Truman Song. Parakeet in your hat. T I N A. <laughs> Mad pooper. <laughs> oh, I have uh, this. Oh, funky gravy. finger. Oh, well, T I N A. If you end up grabbing the uh, the digital, perhaps you could share. I mean, the funny part is, if I got the deluxe, set, I'd still have to get the digital because I don't have a. I don't. I. I, no. <laughs> I am not into vinyl at all. I. No, you just give yeah. the vinyl to me. Oh, that sounds like a good you just, plan. You just give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> you just give it to me. The vinyl. Well, you don't want it to get unused. No, I, I will. I'll, you know, worst case, I will. I will get it 
you know, I'll, I'll procure it through the library and then yeah. I can share it. That's true. But shh. So I just love that they're doing this. It's fun. Um, I, I really like how that they can do these limited edition things and uh, really, you know, cater to a very small demographic of fans. I'm not sure how big Bob's Burgers is, but I know it's, it's still it, it's still on. I mean, it must yeah. have some kind of popularity. I mean, it's renewed, but I don't know. You don't see a lot of right. Bob's Burgers merchandise. I mean, really, you don't. It's not like the old days when you had like South Park. Everything was South Park, and you right. know, yeah, Family Guy and all that fun stuff. But everything in the world is a Funko Pop or a bobblehead. That's so true. I be- that's true. I oh, believe God. that they're, they're yeah. I know. I just I mean, I have a a guy who I do business with. I just bought. I got some action figures from him recently. He's a local dude. Uh, who the biggest part of his business is he has a wall of Funko Pops. I'm from floor to ceiling, probably mm-hmm. 10 or 12 feet. Funko Pops. I just, I just don't get it. Well, they're cheap. They're well, beanie they're cheap. babies. Yeah, it's well. I think they're they're just, the beanie babies of the modern day. Yeah, I don't know about that. I think a lot of people just like them <laughs> because they're cheap and they are yeah. in every bit of fandom. So you don't have to spend right it, 20 bucks on an action figure. You just spend eight bucks, and they're usually pretty cute and they just sit on the shelf versus you know a 20 to 80 dollar you know other thing which you know i don't know i mean you got i I get i I get the point yeah who else is making like i know uh golden girls box sets of toys you know this is yeah i mean the the funko i'll I'll give them that they do touch anything within the imagination oh they're better than the the, pop zeitgeist yeah they're better than the funko reaction toys which are just Ah. ah. No joy. <laughs> Going back to crappy action figures of three and three quarters size. It was it was bad, and we moved beyond it. But let's move back. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, that takes us out of the news as we uh, hear the yacht rock play in the background. So let's get our uh, fun on in the geek easy. This is yacht rock. <laughs> Smooth rock classics from the 70s and 80s. Yacht Rock. Album out now. We're in the geek easy. We got, uh, we're in the danger zone, which is, uh, you know, Kenny Loggins, thank you for that. A proud member of the Soundtrack Society of the early 80s, uh, you know, including I'm All Right. Right. Yeah. And then he turned to the, then he did that weird down in Pooh's corner, which I didn't ever, I never understood. Oh. That that was odd. Well, let me what? let me you let didn't me know jump that Kenny Loggins made that song about Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Very odd. Yeah, no, no, oh, no. Well, thank me, God you let... clarified that you meant Winnie. Yes, not yeah, not, <laughs> not not excrement. That was um, if if I can provide a little yacht rocking knowledge, he did that on a very early album, and the Winnie the Pooh people drove a dump truck load worth of money up to his house, and then he created a whole album around it and, and like reissued it. It's really pathetic. Talk about selling out. Wow. Yeah. But this is also the man who gave me uh, gave us a meet me halfway from the over the top soundtrack. Oh god. A gem. That was a on the over gem. the top soundtrack? It was the main song. Have yeah. you ever watched that movie? I have watched that the movie. Song I just, is don't I don't correlate that song the... with that movie at all. Wow. Who was there well, a female we... like uh uh, nope, no, arm no, no, just him. Oh no, 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 no at all. <laughs> yeah, Big Bertha, nope. the female arm wrestler of Over the Top. Yeah, we should remake that movie. Oh the my god, the three of us. But are you thumb Big wrestling, Bertha? Not I'd win. Arm wrestling. Uh, with thumb wrestling, yeah. Go over the top, Dad. Oh, oh well. <laughs> we, I mean, we watched it. I have, I have on DVD. And it costs like five bucks. I got it several years ago. I have a double disc. I know I talked about this not long ago. Of over the Top with Demolition Man. So Ooh. April and I did, oh, uh, Hey, bad movie Sunday. This was maybe a month ago when we watched those two. It was it was a laugh fest. I'll give Demolition Man a, a, a you know a point on you know just making fun of you know future things and um, yeah, it was okay. Sly, you know, Sly Stallone trying to be a little comedic. Uh, Sandra Bullock, I think it was one of her first early yep. roles. Yeah. 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 Oh well, whatever I'm happened to Sandy okay. Bullock? Hey, we d- we digress. Oh yes. Yes, please. Okay. Well, the yacht rock. We listen to, uh, or sorry, <laughs> eh, in the geek easy. We listen to yacht rock, and we talk about what we're geeking out about. Uh, so uh, this week for me, uh, I had mentioned in the group that I was going to go down the rabbit hole and try to re-embrace my love of X Men, and uh, I decided that I will subscribe to 
the new Resurrection, as they're calling it. That's their launch of the relaunch of the X Men books, and uh, basically we have X Men Prime, which is kind of like setting the table for all of the direction of the X Men books, and then you have the spinoffs, which are two teams: X Men Gold and X Men Blue, which is a basically going back to the 90s when Jim Lee did that famous X-Men number one that was like the highest selling comic of all time I think at a time. Gatefold! Yeah, Gatefold. Gatefold uh, I think they had like 85 different versions of the cover. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean this, right. is, this is right in the heart of the, you know, when I got back into X-Men, so it was a big deal for me. And, and if, if I can jump in, you know what's great about that X-Men number one? It literally has no value in this day and age. No. I have a copy of it I got for 50 cents. Supply and demand. pristine. Yeah, yeah supply exactly. Supply and demand. You, that was when everybody thought that the, the uh, death of Superman was going to fund their children's college education, except oh, right. everyone thought that, so everyone bought the comic. So, yeah, this is right. not how it works. Collectibles have to be rare to have their value. Right. So well, so the right. gold, the X Men Gold team will be um, more along the lines of like the classic, uh, all new, all new uh, giant size X Men you saw with you know Night uh, Nightcrawler, uh, Colossus, uh, Storm, uh, that team Nightcrawler, and also uh, Cyclops. That is uh, one of the team we have kind of a of that grouping. Cyclops is no longer existing. Uh, he's dead, unfortunately. Sorry uh, to spoil it for anyone. And uh, we've got uh, we've got the daughter of another timeline uh, of uh, Jean Grey and Scott Summers, who was um, call it Rain. <laughs> Or, or sorry, um, I can't remember uh, what her name was. Rachel. Rachel, yes, Re Rachel Summers. Yeah, yeah and she yeah. just goes by Phoenix, right? Just no, Phoenix not anymore. Or... Now she's got a new. Um... Now she's got a new name because she felt. Oh like yeah, too... it was yeah. Prestige, Prestige. Because yes, I read. Spoiler alert! I read it too. I read them yeah. both. Yeah, so that's one of the teams. The other team is basically the 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 blue team is the all new X Men, which is. <laughs> Son is making so much noise. Um, the the blue team is essentially the all new X Men, which is basically the time displaced original X Men brought forward. And some there's there's some other team members on that team, but this is kind of resetting the table with the X Men, trying to make them more along lines of um, heroes rather than just mutants. So they've tried this before, but I thought you know what I'll give it a try. Um, I like the lineup. I like what they're trying to do. Um, the art, nothing special to write home about. Um, they, it's funny because they brought the, the X-Mansion, because the mutants had been being attacked, was moved to Limbo, which is the dimensions of demons, so they could not get attacked by humans. So they moved the X-Mansion back to New York, and as they're reestablishing themselves, they get a bill. Uh, that's $18 million <laughs> no. for because rent. Because it's, it's in the middle of Central Park. Yes, so they yes, have to pay $18 million dollars to keep the X-Mansion back in New York. So I'm not sure what happened to the space in Westchester, uh, where the X Mansion used to be, um, condos, condos. Somebody take I'm it sure. over to this get sold out. Was it eminent domain? And the city of New York now have uh, put uh, all their sewage <laughs> sites there. I don't know. There, there is a Walmart there. Yeah. Sorry, they're yeah. everywhere. So th I'll say the comic wasn't bad. It had its fun points. It, it, it definitely had a lot of callbacks to a lot of things. The art was nothing to, to write home about. Um, but I'm pleasantly surprised at, at its quality, so I'll keep reading it. Um, it's a little dense, though, if you're new to the X-Men franchise, that, you know, it's still going to be hard to parse out, you know, where is this book going? Uh, it's really, this is really for fans. I mean, some people can just jump in, but I think some it will just be like, this isn't really a good starting off point. Well, we'll see. They do give a good, I don't know if you noticed it, Charlie, did you read it? Kind of like in the back. Um, it was kind of a great yes! X-Men. That was that an awesome was, recap, and it was very short. That was, I mean, it was great. I was reading through it, and then I got to that part, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to drop out, but I kept swiping, and I'm like, damn. I'm like, all right, but I, it's like the legacy virus, and then yeah. I think they touched on the uh, the Morlocks and Inferno, and a lot of, like, 80s, 80s early 90s stuff that I kind of knew a little bit about. So that was great. So, yeah, I, will, I'm, I was definitely on board with that. Yeah, so, um, in, and Lisa, it's on, like, it's it's... It's available for you to read if you would if you're of any interest in it. But I mean, it might be a little too dense. But it's part of the Marvel. I, I bought it on Comixology, which connects with the Marvel app as well. So that's where it lies. I did subscribe physically, but hopefully, what's going to happen is by the time those physical books arrive, I will also get the digital code for those books. 
because keep sharing. Yes, because the scenario is Marvel, and Charlie was pissed off about this, was that Marvel used to give you a digital code for the book you uh. bought physically, then they changed it up and they gave you three random books rather than right. the book you actually own. Because some people like to have a digital copy and they like to keep their physical copies locked away. Um, so now you they're going back to the digital code. Exactly. Yeah. Your vault that you never look at. Because my vault of comics right. rarely ever gets yeah, here's my There's mine over there. Oh, you can't see it from here. <laughs> It's just on the other side. So, uh, along with this, though, so I will say, if you're a fan of the X-Men, I think it's well worth checking out. If you are not, um, and you're new to the mutant-verse, it might be a tough read, so there might be a better book for you to check out. But the controversy that just came out about this book is the artist apparently put some very anti-Christian and Jewish themes into his book he's a he is a um indonesian uh, he's indonesian which indonesia uh, you know myanmar and those countries actually some of the the largest muslim populations in the world which a lot of people don't think of that in that region but um he is a muslim artist and he obviously had some political viewpoints and put some of those notes in there i would have not grabbed and glommed onto those themes but some Mm -mm. very meticulous readers and uh caught those themes in the comic and it's been called out and marvel is going to um punish the person i don't know if take him off the book not use him anymore i don't know what that's going to be but they are going to be correcting the digital version to remove those themes which is kind of like writing rewriting history don't you think yeah i mean I we can i i wonder how quickly they've done it so can you know can we pop back in and look at your digital copy isn't it is it altered now I probably wouldn't I even notice. Somebody have to point it out. Yeah, I, I didn't notice in the first place. But Lisa, did you read the article? I I, I think I posted it a couple of different. I times. saw you post it. I haven't dug into it yet, but I did see it with the screenshots and everything. Yeah, so I mean, he took he took a couple of uh, shots at things from the Quran. He he did a, a bit where he, he pictured Kitty Pride's head next to a sign for a jewelry store, but only the JW was next to her head. So it, it's like, what what are you doing? Seems all very unnecessary. Well, and I think it, he wasn't. I mean, he used yeah. some, he used some um, components from the Quran to speak out about I think Christians and and Jews um, in in turn. So that's obviously what we do not want. I mean, there's been other comics where they've been anti-Muslim um, as well. So obviously, neither side should be doing uh, that. I mean, comics unless unless you're doing a comic that you self-publish and if you own it. Feel free to put whatever you want out there, but when you are working for a hire, um, and you are working with established properties, you're, uh, you know, and sometimes yes, comics do get political, but you typically are aligned between the publisher and the writer right. and everybody else. It's not like Sneaky. secret. I mean, I know Disney had it where it's like artists were secretly putting very. I don't know, sexual things. In yeah, the there, there's, a, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a dick in the Little Mermaid, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. Apparently the dust when it settled in Lion King said sex or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, oh. Lisa, you're, Lisa, you're an you're a, um, independent contractor. I mean, it'd be like you being said, hey, can you do this for me? And you start putting in, I don't know, Baby Groot subvertively into your, your, your work, right? I mean, or something like that. Or putting your political views into... Well, I would... Do that just to piss you off. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it would be worth losing a job over pissing me off. But let's, oh. let's be honest. I think it's more likely that I would hide a penis in my work than do anything that's resembling well, I mean, speech. Because I love everybody. Would, yeah, who wouldn't? Who doesn't like to just throw a dick in here and there? I don't know. I'm going to be totally. looking at every V that Lisa puts in her artwork to look for secret messages. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, consider, you know... I am, I was born and raised a Jew, I have friends of all walks of life, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of anybody, and to your point, yes, if you're working for someone else, you definitely have no right to do that, but frankly, even if it's your own book, does anybody really want to be spreading hateful ignorance? Precisely, no. yeah, exactly, it's yeah. dumb. I mean, I don't know it's if dumb. Was, I mean, it to be fun, mindless entertainment, you know? Yeah. Right. Not you that will. they can't take a stand, they can, I mean, we've had many comics and... Um, geek-related properties. I mean, obviously, the X-Men in and of itself is a political stance when you think about it. But, uh, yeah, no, I I think it's kind of awful. I mean, if the allegations are true and that's what he was attempting to do, then he deserves the consequences he gets. You're 
you're out of there, buddy. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see this guy going on to uh, to continue to be some kind of a big shot. I think he right. he rolled the dice and, and is going to lose if that's in fact what he was trying to pull off. Right. Oops. Like maybe he thought he was being clever and nobody would catch it. I don't know. Right. Exactly. So anyway. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know, Charlie, thumbs up, thumbs down from you, the book. Thumbs up, you, the message? thumbs up. Yep. I'm now uh, curious to try to read it again and see if those messages are gone. But, uh, yeah, I will, um, you know, as, uh, as, as you share that book with me, I think I will continue to read it. Well, cool. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I got to get in the mode where I don't spread myself too thin, thin in comics these days, so this would be my X-Men book to read, rather than 85 different X-Men books, because there's way too many. So, I'm fine with just focusing on this one. Yeah. So, Lisa, what do you have in the Geek Easy? Well, you guys are going to, your eyes are going to glaze over, because neither uh. of you read anything <laughs> other than comics. Books? Anything, you know, Magazines. that doesn't have pic pictures. You guys you're talk, you're talking about books, words, maybe. With, words with no pictures? I don't know about that. Yes. I was happy to find out, and I think that this news was a few weeks ago, but, you know, I'm always sort of happy, but also somewhat skeptical when any of my favorite sci-fi or fantasy books get made into movies. There's always that hope, you know, of you'd love to see it in, on the big screen. Um, you know, Ready Player One is a great example. I think anybody who read that book is kind of like excited, but there's been a lot of rumors that so much of it is going to be stripped out, etc. So anytime, if you're a bookworm, anytime they're taking a book that's something somewhat beloved to you and turning it into a movie, it makes you a little nervous. And I just found out that they are going to potentially be making a movie, a book that I read recently by a female sci-fi fantasy author, um, which is called, uh, oh God, what is the first one? I can't even remember the name. Um, Clearly uh, a real Sh favorite. No, 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 A Darker Shade of Magic. There's three in the series. And uh, if you are a bookworm and you happen to be one of the handful of people listening to us, that book is phenomenal. Uh, the premise of the story is that there are three different versions of the city of London and they are overlapping in time and space, and there is one guy, a couple guys actually, but who are able to pass through to the different versions. Oh, wow. Um, I, reading it, felt that it would be a phenomenal movie. You know, you start to do the thing when you're a bookworm of, if it's a book that reads like a movie, you start casting it in your head. We've all done that. I mean, I'm sure we've mm -hmm. done that with comic books too, where you start mm -hmm. to cast, you know, the movies. So same kind of feeling, and um, I'm, I would very much be interested in seeing this become a movie i don't know if they could pull it off and who would be in it but i think it's a pretty phenomenal story so if you are a book reader and you lean towards sci-fi and fantasy not of the fairies and mushrooms variety but of the mushrooms. more interesting world building type those books are great they are by a woman named v.e schwab i think she's actually known for writing young adult fiction before this but uh the first one is called a Darker Shade of Magic, and there's two books following it, one of which just came out, the third, and they are really um, fantastic books. You know, kind of, I think I read them in three days. Wow. So this is More, Sony? A, a movie so I don't it, know. Sony um, optioned it, apparently. They won the bidding war. Oh, uh-oh. Uh, oh, that's the not good. And the people who are producing yeah, no doubt. it, the people who produced it, um, uh, they uh, made Passengers, um, and let's see. And they're also producing the fate of the furious, which we know is fast and furious. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god! Fast and the furious is like forty-seven, right? The trailers for that movie just make me cringe. And apparently, oh. Gerard Butler is on board also to produce. Yikes. So he, I think, is the whole um, push behind the whole thing. I yeah. think he read the book and was the yeah. one who. Thought it wow. would make a phenomenal movie. I agree. I think that you know, movie making at this point is far along enough that they could do a really good job. Um, I think it would appeal to the Harry Potter crowd a little bit. It's a more kind of grown-up version of magic. But uh, yeah, there's another series. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with the series called Wool. Mm, no, that's a cool story. Self-published. It's a sci-fi book. Um, very dystopian 
future, the world has fallen to shit kind of book. And I, I love those. Well, that one is a series, and the coolest thing about it is the guy who wrote it, Hugh Howey, self-published it on Amazon, and it became the number one seller in Amazon sci-fi category. And wow. he became phenomenally successful, self-published. He ended up doing a deal where he did a distribution deal for someone to print them and distribute them, but not a publishing deal. He's kept all the publishing to himself, which I think is great. I love hearing these stories of people who kind of buck the system. And then Ridley Scott optioned it. So, oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if it'll ever get made into a movie, but when you read it, it certainly reads like one. So that's another book. If you are a bookworm, read that series, and you will absolutely cast it in your head and think about what kind of movie it could be. Oh, wow. Deep. That's cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, the self-publishing on Amazon has gotten huge. Um, quite honestly, the future of books um, are not going to be at Barnes & Noble. They're going to be online. They're going to be like that. Even if you buy the physical book, it's going to be yep. not available at your local bookstore. It's going to be that way because millions of people have the ability to get these books out there, and uh, they don't have to rely right. on a huge publisher. My wife is going through that right now. It's it's very hard to get in the door. A lot of the only people that get their books published these days are celebrities because they're celebrities. So, um, and, they, and they can right. move them. They can move them, yeah. make a deal that's worth it. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, right. That is I'm cool, not, not. Lisa. I will. I don't want to say I'll read the book because, <laughs> but I like the idea. I love the magician. So that whole, you know, darker fantasy that's not like you know. You would love, history. yeah. You would love that. They're, they're actually pretty quick books. However, as far as the Wool series, if you're not into uh, reading books without pictures, they made a graphic novel of it. Oh, I like that idea. Someone <laughs> adapted it because uh, it was books, so popular. With graphic novels. <laughs> Well, that's why I'm mentioning it because I know you guys need your pretty pictures. That's true. Well, that's true. Ma- maybe maybe you can get Todd to commit to read the sample free chapter of it that appears on Amazon. That's all the commitment I got. If you can give that's me, like totting a show, except totting right. a book. Yeah, totting if, a book. If you give me a, uh, a three paragraph summary of the book, I can fill in the gaps. Oh my goodness! <laughs> my mind works God. that way. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh well. Right. Works. Uh, awesome suggestion, Lisa. Appreciate that, uh, Charlie. Well, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is back this week. Todd, did you watch? Uh, no, it's on my DVR. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Which I, quite honestly, I'm going to have to get really good about. Um, big big news in our house. We're getting rid of Direct. We're going to our cable provider. Uh, so we're going to lose all our shows on our DVR. Oh, but, boy. you got to pick up pace. But basically, when you can replace uh, just TV um, for like 40 bucks and get all the same things, you kind of kind of got to move on that. Right. I hear you. But anyway, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is back. Um, it was phenomenal. Um, Todd, did you see the most recent episode before the winter break? I am not watching the LMD thing that has no, I have no interest in LMDs. Okay. It's like a tech, right. it's, well, I mean, it's, it's like, it's like um, you know, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, basically. Right, well, real, th- this not. was, yeah, yeah. Th- this was the end of that, and perhaps that was a little drawn out, but they have, they're, they're now in the, they're, they're now taking their own spin on the Matrix. All right, they're in this virtual world, uh, in this virtual world, Hydra hit, uh, Hydra wins over Shield. They uh, they took over uh, in the, the whole Inhuman crisis. I loved it. Yes, it did bring back Grant Ward, which I think you already figured out that part's maybe not so great. But anyway, it was it, it was in your face. I dug it. Thought it was neat. Uh, I enjoyed the show. Um, you know that I'm a I'm a diehard. I'm going to stick with it no matter what because that's just kind of my scene. But uh, I, I think the show is just I mean, like I, Todd. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was um, I was really wrapped while I was watching it. You know, I mean, I was really digging it, so I was having I was having fun watching it, and that ties into another commitment that Todd's making fun of me about. But I'm gonna I'm gonna see how it is. This whole Secret Empire thing, Cap as as Hydra Cap, has just got me intrigued. So I'm gonna read this series that comes out uh, later this later this month. I think first issue is at the either at the end of this month or next month. I'm gonna give it a ride. Uh, I subscribe to it. Uh, the print subscription was dirty, dirty cheap. Uh, I'm going to give it a ride. If it doesn't work out, what's nice about that, Todd, and you'll find this too with your Marvel subs, is that it's easy to move stuff around. You just get on with one of their people and say, I'm going to move these issues over to this other thing, and you're all good. So I'm going to give it a ride. Uh, that subsequently gives you guys the opportunity to check it out if you're so inclined. Um, but Cap is the driving force. I've wanted to get back into something Cap-related. Um because that's you know he's he's my number two when it comes to comic book characters and Spidey's supposed to have a big part as well so 
We'll see. You're right. It's thrice thrice burned because Secret Wars was milk toast to us and to me anyway. Though I really bought into it with some of the tie-ins, and then Civil War Two was just a total failure for both of us, Todd, you and me. Um, so I, I'm taking a chance on love. We'll, we'll see what happens. Is that coming out like biweekly? What's what's the schedule yes, for the book? It is going to be biweekly. So maybe they're trying to learn from their mistakes to just get the story out. Bang, bang, bang! It's out in three months. You know, it's 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 nine issues plus a zero, uh, a zero issue that comes. So that's ten issues. So they're just trying to bang her out. So you're going to be. So if you're getting this physically, they say six to eight weeks, right? So you potentially. It's the, not the writing it, in the wall will be out there by the time you get the book. <laughs> it's 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 more like one to one to two weeks, to be honest with you. Oh, I think okay. it's six it's six to eight weeks to get the first issue. Yeah, it is. I mean, so that's what they say initially. Yeah. But if and it's then, if uh, it's if it's coming out bi weekly, they're they're popping it in the mail. So I'm not so worried about that. It's not so yeah. hard to avoid. It's not like at other kind of internet spoilers when it's a comic and something a little bit more niche. I think it's easy to avoid. As opposed to like this thing happened on your favorite show last night, you know, blah blah blah, and everybody, or the, you know, here's the big uh, spoiler reveal from the new Star Wars movie or some shit like or that. Or when a certain someone, uh, admin of our group, uh, puts a spoiler in a Donald Trump meme of I Walking can't, Dead, which I, just aired four days ago. Hmm, I can't believe I can't believe that April did that. That is terrible, <laughs> and I'm going to have a chapter <laughs> about it. Or, or like when I told you that I have a piece of intel about um, Star Wars that I can't tell you. Well, that's just shitty. Well, I could I mean, make up that lie too and say I've got I've got yeah. more knowledge. It's not a lie. It's not a lie. Lisa, if you I, can't tell I, us, I have a verify. certain person that told me something that I really. Then it's why, not even why, that big a deal. Why? Why would you I even can't bring tell it up? You. Why would you bring it up? Because I like to torture you. Why else would I bring it up? Exactly. Lisa wants us to make... She wants us so to that, think she's cool. When, it, when uh, it happens, then I can be like, Oh my god, I knew that. You won't believe me, but oh I god, promise you're, you. You're just so... You're, uh, you're a... You're, hey, hey, what if... What if I, like, wrote it down and dated it and put it in a sealed envelope? Okay, and let's do that. Oh, I'm sure that wouldn't be fake no, at all. No, no. Here's another envelope <laughs> I've prepared for today. Oh my Sealed god, exactly. Leathered. The fake the fake uh fake tip. So no, I mean, what if I mailed it to you so you could hold on to it until it was Oh, all right. Like, okay. I wouldn't okay. open at least. <laughs> I will I will I, I'll, 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 I'll part open, I'll like with a tea kettle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. No, Lisa, you have to like you have to hire like a PO box locked. Send it to it now, and then you tell me on a specific date. You send me the combination. I open it up. Don't tempt me, because I would seriously spend the money just to be like, "Booyah! I knew this." Oh, that would be pretty. I, awesome. You know, what? I'm on board. I'm on board. You want to pull that off? I will. I will. I'm a willing participant. She's gonna count me it. in. You're gonna have a, like a time one of those time uh, time capsules. You're gonna bury it in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we'll have a ceremony where you guys come over and dig it up with me. So would this be How? a rumor? Uh, would this be a uh, news piece for December? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yes. My, my, my. Yes. Okay. And yeah, and it's about a specific character, so it's even it's about a, some something new, no less. Um, it's so stressful. I almost oh. wish I didn't know. Oh, good. It's stress. It's not like uh, or or better or better, I, better I, yet, you didn't tell us. It. I wouldn't have even mentioned it, but the person who told me was like, you should totally torture your other geek friends with the fact that you know something that you can't share. Oh, that's rude. Well, so how, how, blame him. How, did, how did he get away with People telling you? Right now, he shouldn't have. Oh, but, you know, I'm, I'm so charming. How can you resist? Oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, well uh, SMH. Lisa likes to tease us, and there you go. Mm -hmm. Once again, she's uh, dangling yeah, uh, nerd uh, bait in front of our face, and uh, we will never be the wiser. No, no. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. no. I swear to God. It's, almost, it's one of those things I wish I didn't know. Oh, boy. Well, you can't take it away. It's like you need a mind wipe, uh, you know, right? Like, like, men, little, like, like men in well, black. Men in black flashy device. That's right. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that wraps it up for the Geek Easy this week. The Yacht Rock's getting turned off. They're cleaning up the joint. And uh, we are going to get into our topic of the week, when Nerd Loves Goes Bad. Shot through the heart, and you're to blame. You give love a bad name. 
Well, everyone, this week uh, I was inspired by a uh, news article uh, to talk about, and they specifically were talking about what pop culture thing that you once loved uh, has now basically burned you out, uh, became a chore, you know, just you, just you lost that love and feeling. So the scenario is, um, I thought, well, with, with nerd culture and the way it is uh, today, there's so much to love, there's got to be something that, you know, you once held, you know, passionately because there's probably just very limited amount of it. So you know, you craved every little bit of piece of it. But now there's like, you know, it's like a fire hose. Every every week, something new is getting announced. Something, you know, an 85 version, you know, 85 copy uh, episode uh, omnibus is coming out for a comic book you once loved. So um, with that in hand, you know, something you once loved but now revile or wish it would go away so you could get a breather. Um, what is it for you, Charlie? Um, oh boy, you're putting me first. Look at this. I'm on the spot. Um, I, you know, I have a couple of different things, Todd. I'll let you. Um, I'll let you tackle the first one I was going to talk about. Um, but I'll talk about two. The first one is a television program um, that I love very deeply. Uh, in the early 2000s, Special K, Kiefer Sutherland had a show called 24. It was a Todd. You watched it. At least did you ever partake of that show? Oh yeah, I loved that show. Loved oh, that show. God, yeah, I watched I, a couple seasons of it. Yeah. You know, I, I adore it. I'm actually, I got, I, I was flipping through Amazon a couple of months ago, and there was a TV movie that was between seasons, and I watched it, and that sucked me right back into a rewatch. So I started rewatching seasons and just really, really enjoyed, even though I'd seen it many times before. So um, back after uh, after the Super Bowl, uh, Fox's mid-season, mid-season replacement, uh, one of their mid-season replacements, was a revival of the show. Now, it was same format, same kind of counter-terrorist busting uh, character, but it was a new character played by Corey Hawkins, Walking Dead. Uh, he was Dr. Dre uh, in uh, Straight Outta Compton. He was in the King Kong movie uh, that just came out. Um, just like the final movie event uh, that starred Kiefer Sutherland from a couple of years ago, 24 Live Another Day, this was 12 episodes. Is still There was a time jump at the end, or at least I'm assuming they're going to be because it's not done yet. Um, it's about 10 episodes into the 12, and it is awful. It's really not good. <laughs> really it's bad? Really, it's really, it's, it's, I mean, that show was, is a perfect study in the law of diminishing returns. First season, mm-hmm. amazing. Second season, not bad. Third season, shit. Fourth season, they reinvented it, and it's okay again, and five was okay six to the bottom and then they you know they they, they were it's a roller coaster so they finish on it in an okay coaster. they finish <laughs> in an okay <laughs> roller coaster of hate um but really this this new character they try to he's a you know he's a, a black black lead instead of a white lead and they try to work in some black culture stuff that just falls really flat um black it's culture. kind of it's the same uh same kind of Middle Eastern terrorist. They go. I mean, this show's gone from Middle Eastern terrorist to Russian terrorist to this, that, the other Mexican terrorist. They've just done all kinds of. So they're back with the steady Eddie. That is the the Muslim terrorist, and it just just very flat. No surprises. Everything super predictable. I just want it to Boring. be done. I just want it to be done. But I'm hanging in there because I I guess I want to know how it ends. And that is overriding my instinct to say this is a piece of shit TV show. Um, Todd, that that um, that report that I shared earlier this week from TV Guide, renewed shows, shows on the bubble, canceled shows. This one's on the bubble. I hope it goes away. I don't want to feel the pressure of having to get sucked into watching it again because uh, it's just it's just not great. But again, my fondness for the original program kept me hanging on. And, and it shouldn't. I mean, they even brought back um, a heritage character, Tony Almeida, Carlos Bernard. They brought him back, and I'm like, oh, that'll make it great. It did not make it great. <laughs> it did not make it, did not it, make it, make it great again. Uh, it did not make it great again. Won't get fooled again. again. So, won't get fooled again. And then my second thing, um, and Todd, you and I uh, go back and forth about this a lot. Uh, digital comics are a piece of it, but back in the day, Todd, when you and I uh, were in college together, so this was 20 years gone by, what did we do every week without fail? Comic book shop. Comic book shop. We went down. There's a comic book shop on uh, Michigan Avenue in Lansing. It was uh, between the Capitol and Frandor. We went there every week. 
I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. I think it's still there. But it was every week it was. I'm getting this title, and I'm get, I have my pull list. So I got my little brown bag of two or three books, and I'm reading them every week, and then I'm putting them away, and I'm going back for more because the comics were two bucks. Were they still a buck seventy five at that point? Uh, two bucks. Super. Yeah. Buck su- super. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bucket shot. It was super cheap hobby. Um, and it was just a weekly deal. So, you know, I had had subscriptions uh, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, that I just, I went to the, got to get it and mm, smell it and read it every week and bag it and put it away. And, um, Did you say I, you smelt it? <laughs> whoever oh, smelt it. You know, I was, so that, was a little, that was a little bit more about the old books, you know, just get that smell. You were that, huffing comic books. A little bit. Um, but, Todd, I think we both got out of college. We both kind of got away from it. Um, and in one way or the other, you and I, we, we read trade paperbacks, then digital became a thing, so we not only buy, but we have Marvel Unlimited, and then what I buy, I share with you, you share what you buy with me, so, you know, going to the comic shop has just become, uh, you know, I, 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 I do business with some of these people, I'm friends with some of these people, but it's just, in a lot of ways, it's kind of a, it's kind of a racket, you know what I mean? I, I know it's it's tough for them, but like back issues. Here's a five dollar back issue that I would get for fifty cents at a at a, a con or something like that. You know what I mean? So it just becomes this laborious chore that that I've had an easier time giving up. You know, I mean, Todd, it, and, and again, it's convenient for me to pop into a comic shop and look around. But for Todd, I know for you, it's it's not even at, it's not at all convenient for you to visit the comic shop. It's completely out of my way to do it. Right? And really? You don't have one near you? Um, I mean, near me, but I I don't pass it along my normal path of going to work or anything like that. So I would have to There's actually no point plan. having like a pull list or anything. Uh, no, I mean, if I did, if they gave me a discount or something, that was back in the day too. They give you like a ten percent discount if you were normal, you know, regular or whatever, which would be very convenient. If you were normal, so you didn't get the yeah. discount. No, I didn't yeah, have yeah. a discount. They looked at me and said, "Oh, that guy looks abnormal." But uh, no, right. if you're a regular uh, shopper, they'd give you a discount. They don't really do that much anymore. Uh, some shops do, but yeah, the, I think yeah. The one that I go to does gives ten percent flat. The other one you gotta have a pull list, or you gotta do. And it's like all these hoops, and I think that scared me off as well. Yeah, I mean, and back in the day, you didn't have the internet, you didn't have all these things. So getting a new comic book, I mean, there was the internet. I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal as it is now. Uh, but getting a new comic book was exciting. You'd go see. Hey, you didn't know what the cover was gonna look like. You didn't know. This. But now with you know, you're seeing everything online. You know exactly what the book's coming out. We always talk about. Hey, this week's comics. So it takes away the mystery, the excitement, and there's a million things to draw your attention now. So, yeah, mm-hmm. the importance of going to a comic book shop is less. And I quite honestly, I prefer trades typically because um, the way comics are getting canceled these days, anyways, it's very right. Oh, right. you got the first three issues and it's canceled and that storyline's dead. So it's nice to read right. them in one sitting. Um, uh, completely story so right right exactly so so that's uh, that's tough like i said part of me feels bad because i visit the same comic shop i went to when i was a kid um but it's also a used bookshop i think that's more the business at that shop um so but some of the other ones that you see popping up you know it's they don't have the big long racks and dedicated they have you know the dollar bin or the two dollar bin or something and it's just i think it's just a very tough way to make a living and they are they have collectibles and different stuff so well, it's just it, it's just it has has factored its way out of the way that I do stuff. So, right, yeah. Well, you know, it's you know when it becomes a chore, uh, probably time to walk away from it. Oh well, Lisa, what is your what is your burnout point? Um, I don't really have that many because I tend to not have commitment issues when it comes to <laughs> fandom. <laughs> Like somebody else that I know, um, who is who is not me, right? Who is not me either? So <laughs> by by uh, you know, use your sleuth really abilities me? to figure you're out who me? it is. Your your sle- your sleuthery. I'm as not committal as they get. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. Boy. Um, so I don't really have that many. I did get burnt out. This is going to sound like sacrilege. I got burnt on Doctor Who for a little while just because, Mm -hmm. but there's a reason. I have a valid reason, which is that when I originally got into Who, I started from the 2005 reboot and did the whole thing in a year. Mm -hmm. Took me a year. I did, you know, and I wasn't doing really anything else at the time, so I did 100 plus episodes. Holy cow. Wow, that's a lot. And I was current, 
And right. I kind of had to like give up the current show for a little while, but I'm back to that. So I just yeah. needed a breather. It's like eating um, pizza. I would say it's like of... eating pizza 24 seven, and eventually you don't want pizza for a long time. Right. No, I never have that problem actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> not pizza. Name something else. No, not pizza. Um, I'm a little burnt out on Arrow. That show got really bad for me. I used to really enjoy it. I mean, I would watch it with the sound off now, but. <laughs> <laughs> You make up your own dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah, get him! Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Um, Where's Lisa? Where's Lisa at? We need to save Lisa. I love Lisa. Is that what he says? Li oh, Lisa. Lisa, come touch my washboard abs. Lisa, <laughs> Li please. Lisa's the, let, me, Lisa's let me take the you only, out. She's the only one who can give my life meaning. Where's Lisa? Right, right, exactly. Although I don't think Stephen Amell's wife in real life would like that. Um, eh. she's, a brunette. she's a brunette. That makes me happy. Oh. Huh. Yeah, know. yeah, we have more fun. Um, <laughs> so really, that's it. I, I'm not burnt on much. I'm really not. Uh, Once I'm in, I'm in. Ah, uh, Lisa's, Lisa's, Lisa will commit to you. Listen to that. I'm, I'm however, loyal. However, Todd will commit to nothing. I that's am like, I'm all about. <laughs> I'm like a moth. He's, I slit around. Go to another he's flame. That, He's that. Uh, he's that. Uh, he's that blowing trash bag in American Beauty. Woo! I'm fickle. Woo! I'm blown by the winds of uh, <laughs> fandom. What everybody else likes, the wind blows me to the other side, <laughs> so I can complain Aww. about it. Yes, yes. Oh, I mean, I'm, yeah. I, I. Well, for me, um, you know, back in the day, Charlie and I know this. Lisa, you as well. Um, there was so little geek, you know, media, whether it was on TV the movie screen, whatever, uh, that was quality. You know, you right. got, like, the Spawn movie, you got, like, Generation X miniseries, you know, uh. you got the Mutant X crappy syndicated uh, movie, you got those bad Incredible Hulk movies that were on TV where you'd see, like, Thor and Daredevil <laughs> on screen. Bill, Yeah, Bill Bixby, uh, uh, Incredible Hulk. Trial of the Incredible Hulk, horrible stuff. Um, so we used to just crave anything that came out that was quality and, you know... Then you just started seeing the snowball of nerd culture grow and uh, being able to have good special effects on the cheap. Um, typically, these really talented writers got, got you know, that, that grew up this, watching the same stuff we did with Star Wars and reading comic books and finally got to see their vision on screen as they were fans as well. It just became an, uh, a, just that snowball that eventually became a huge, you know, avalanche of geek media that came and hit us over the head. And it's like, now we're in the the uh, the renaissance. It's 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 fantastic. There's so much stuff out there, but the problem is there's so much good stuff. There's still there's even more bad stuff. So for me, um, I'm starting to get to the point where I don't need to watch and support everything superhero themed um, or geek themed because there's just too much and a lot of it is crap. And I'd rather see more of the good rather than of the bad. And for me, that stands in with a lot of the superhero shows. I'd rather watch a new take, a fresh take, something better than just more of the formulaic. And when I say formulaic, I'm talking about the CW shows primarily and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, those are pretty much those, those are the shows we're getting these days. And quite honestly, it just feels like they just took the A-team and just plugged in superheroes to a large extent. The way that this show is set up, the only thing they've changed is having ongoing story arcs. Um, rather than just every episode you end it and everybody does a high five in slow mo at the end, right? Is that what they do? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Clap. Yeah. Clap or, noise. Or they used to, and the more you know. It's almost like taking cartoons and doing that. So, mm -hmm. quite honestly, this, the, the CW, I don't watch Arrow anymore. Uh, the Legends of Tomorrow, I will watch it based on what the episode is about. Because they typically, they're doing more. Um, standalone episodes, but they're, they're going through history. Like, I watched the George Lucas episode. Very fun. Um, yes. They've done a uh, J.R.R. Token episode where they ran into him in World War One. Um, yeah, it was one of the ones I saw yesterday. Yeah, yeah and they did a, something similar, Charlie, where they did a what if, just like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but it was called Legion of Doom, where yep. Legion of Doom actually won. So I'll watch that one, too. So I'll, I don't have to watch every episode, because quite honestly, the, what happened on last week's episode is enough to basically keep you up to speed. It cuts out all of the extra I would call filler that you get you take a, a, an idea that's like 20 minutes long and you turn it into 44 
Um, and I feel like there's just too much of that. There's just not enough must-see in those episodes. There's, enough, there's a little bit of good stuff, but not enough. So I've kind of get the point with even Supergirl, that kind of gets tedious. The Flash is probably my nice favorite. Yeah. Um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has gotten better, but it took so long, and there's just so many episodes just like, hey, can we do 13 of just good rather than 22 of, eh, okay. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Every so, other. But the thing that's made me very excited, we're getting shows like Preacher, uh, American Gods is coming out, um, we're getting uh, more shows like that, Magician, so we're getting, I think, some things that are doing things differently from different um, authors, whether it's from graphic novels or um, standard, you know, books that we're seeing on TV, which makes me <laughs> Books without excited. pictures? Yeah, books without <laughs> pictures, novels. Yeah, so I'm very excited with that, because that means we're just going to get more of things that are different versus more of the stamped, because I would hate to see, you know, we're hearing even the Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Girl shows coming out, Cloak and Dagger, um, Runaways, so we're just going to get inundated. So I, I quite honestly, I think there's going to be a lot of casualties, and I'd hate to see good shows lose out to mediocre, bland shows. So that is my... I mean- uh, it, it all has to do with what the what the sheeple watch. I think we all know that's what keeps bad stuff alive. And but Charlie, keeps... you're, you're one of the sheeple because you say I watch. Cause I, I know. know. What the heck? And you have terrible I... taste anyway. Yes. Uh, Your yeah. movie updates to the group have informed us that you will watch anything. <laughs> Charlie that's, has that's, questionable taste at best. That's why at best. I, I'm sp- I'm speaking for the sheeple. Yeah. Um, that the sheep <laughs> rule and the sheeple rule and uh, hipsters drool. That's you, Ty. He's the hipster. He's okay. like the Lorax. He speaks for the trees. Exactly. So I think the key takeaway from all this, guys, is you know, uh, watch what you love and you're passionate about. Don't be obligated because, quite honestly, you don't own these sh- owe these shows anything or these books or these media or toys or whatever you get into. You know, if you don't love it anymore, step back and maybe you'll get reignited with the love with me and X Men. It's kind of that way. So, I, I, I. I I did that with my my action figures. You, John, and I kind of did this purge between the three of us about a year, year and a half ago, where I just said, you know what, I'm not crazy about this character, or this whatever it is. So I just started selling them off, using the money to finance getting stuff that I actually wanted, and now I have a collection I'm more excited about. So yeah, I mean, in, in that regard, absolutely. Okay. Well, cool. Well, um, find your passion and love that. So. Without, uh, I guess, Charlie, that takes us out for the show. Um, I did want to give a little geek love, though, um, to our favorite contrarian argumentative uh, <laughs> fan, uh, our live blogger, uh, Sunil Abrams. Sunil! Yeah. Sunil, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I come up with my own name in my head, and we'll go with that. I, uh, I, I, I don't think his last name is Abrams. That's you J- botched his last name, but we'll forget. Abraham? Him. Yeah, the fact that you called him Abrams will result in a real <laughs> nasty comment. I to do that, because right? he's he, not a fan and, of JJ he Abrams. He hates JJ Abrams. Okay. Yes, that's like that is his defining characteristic uh, in, in in a lot of our dialogue. So that's right. anyway, so at least call him Sunil. So that's Sunil. Uh, <laughs> yes, he has a blog. He's been a big fan of our show, and he's a big we're a big fan of his as well in the group with his. Uh, he's not a fan of me. That's true. Lisa no. and him have. Uh, uh, I kind of the light, the dark of the group, you know, and hopefully, right, you know, right. you can be more like me and just be happy-go-lucky and forgiving and non-judgmental. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, uh. if you want to have fun, check out Sunil's blog. I don't have a, uh, I don't have an address here, but I'll add in the group, and you can also, um, you know, follow along our show with him and make comments and have fun. Please. Mm-hmm. Please Engage him do. in debate because he loves that. Oh, he loves that a lot. Too. He loves talking about the Force Awakens. Just yes. get him. His favorite him topic. Yes. Favorite top. Yes. So thank you, Sunil. Uh, keep up the good uh, argument and uh, live life and episode seven forever. Woohoo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Just so, like uh, Baby Groot forever. <laughs> that is the show for this week. Charlie, take us out. You got it, friends. As always, thank you for joining us. We are uh, a, an outcropping, a side project, a legacy of the twenty-four Facebook, the twenty-four <laughs> <laughs> of the of the Secret Friends Unite uh, Facebook community and podcast page. Uh, find us over on Twitter at Secret Friends U. Give us a twittering, a, a, a twinkling, a Twitter bomb, and we'll Twitter bomb you right back uh, in a in a, of course a very. Um, friendly nonviolent way uh send us an email over to the old mailbag secret friends unite at gmail.com with 
questions, comments, concerns, and we will read and make fun of them. Um, I'm going to tell you, as always, thanks for joining us. Please keep on trucking and sharing is caring. Be the hero, not the villain. Be the villain. It's more fun. Secret friends, unite! Thank <laughs> you.